us start so okay so we so we have going to debate on technical agility first of all is that really a area to be debated what is there to be debated right it's all debate is a job of managers so technical agility who will debate about it managers okay what is there to debate what is there to debate hello what is there to debate check hello mic test hello. okay if some thoughts are coming up in your uh, mind uh, probably i think we are in a position to start with our first most uh, hot topic question there are many companies which are asking for a technical scrum master or a scrum master uh, job which says java dot net and what not skills are needed okay do we really need this kind of stuff what is your take on it do you need it no need it what is the advantage what is the problem with it and so on who wants hello. to start hello i i i believe technical uh, yeah from the uh, original agility perspective i don't think so we believe it because uh, when i was in, i i don't uh, want to tell the name of the company because that's a agreement sign but what we did is uh, ridiculous two of the scrum masters uh, we had from one uh, was from the admin team and she didn't know anything about the development and she's doing absolutely great 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 job as a scrum master maybe because she doesn't know anything about it maybe another lady was from hr she was pretty junior and she liked it she came to one of the trainings and she said wow can i do it and i said why not okay and she is a scrum master she is doing absolutely awesome job and not other technical people are doing so competitively kind of you know so i believe from the uh, reality perspective we don't really need it because that's a, that's a different job that you need to do uh, having people around and making sure that they're uh, interests are taken care and helping them however when i speak to because i have hire for many of the companies i help them in interviews and something like that i i ask them why do you add this technical word and they say see i still do not believe that agility will survive for longer time because there was waterfall there was v model there was spiral model and then there is this agile if your agile becomes fragile some day what will i do this with these people because i as an industry i have to change so what what do i do with it so i i do not know i mean when so that's that's the you know uh, the risk management for them so if agile becomes fragile tomorrow i will have this guy hey you become a resource now so that's what is this is so i don't know whether it's right or wrong but this is what is fear in the industry okay so good perspective from vijay so, so uh, yeah but i would can enough come ahead everyone because we are just people who will sit down so So, do you yeah. want a moderated uh, debate or an immoderate debate? Immoderate. So, this Who is. Who wants to? This is too moderate. Take it. Okay, let me spice it up. So, what he said is making sense from one perspective, but when it actually comes to some of the service industries, and when it is a question of billability, and can you build a scrum master who doesn't do anything, and all this, what is your take, a Bhuvan? well what i've seen is uh, people uh, mixing up uh, the skills and the traits that are required uh, for a person to you know uh, do the scrum master role and a lot of times uh, people think that okay i need a technical lead but i need a technical lead who understands scrum so then they go hunting for some person who you know knows technology and they also want somebody who understands scrum and for some reason they choose to call that role scrum master i think scrum offers options uh, for all type of skills and people and they would rather be wanting to look for a development team member rather than you know scrum master because you need 3 to 9 team members you just need one scrum master with each team so i think there is a lot of confusion uh, uh, and i guess we need to work with the hiring managers uh, the hr managers who you know make these posts public and uh, try to make more sense out of what they are really looking for uh, so 
yes, when I read these kind of job postings, I understand that that person, where they're coming from. But I guess somebody needs to reach out to them, work with them and, you know, or try to send out the right message because uh, you can't be sending mixed signals when you are looking for uh, hiring a new person on your team. So there should be or there, I think there's a need for more clarity in terms of who they are looking for, what they need. And, cer and certainly just throwing in the word scrum or scrum master into whatever JD they already had is not going to help. Uh, so, uh, first of all, when people ask for Scrum Masters that have technical background, there can be some benefit to having such a person. Um, I often tell people that, uh, that a technical person in a Scrum Master role has a built-in bullshit detector, okay? Because technical people sometimes tell you that they're working on this thing and it's really important and if you're not really technical you don't understand that that's not actually that important it's just really fun but uh, when people are looking for technical scrum masters I actually think it's usually a sign that the overall organization itself has not realized that it needs to be agile itself um, because uh, technical scrum masters and also included in this category is safe implementations and less implementations for scaling agility. Those techniques for scaling agility focus solely on the development department and maybe the product management department, but mostly the, the development department. And what happens is as you get bigger and bigger and take over more and more of those organizations, the conflicts between the waterfall organization and the underlying development organization become acute. And then we see frequently, and I've seen this with SAFE as well, that uh, bottom-up growth of agility in an organization, if you do not take care of the top-level executives, is doomed. Uh, what will happen is the agility will, re will be more transparent, will reveal problems, failures, as we talk about celebrating failures, but waterfall people do not celebrate failures. They, they want to hide failures. And so the higher it gets, the closer it gets to them, the more likely it is that they are going to figure out a way to shut it down. That's my comment about that. <laughs> Thank so you. there is no debate. People are throwing your opinions, so however well founded they are. Yeah. Yeah. There's almost no disagreement. There's a bit of this and bit of that. It is so boring. No, uh, I, 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 you disagree I would, with me? Uh, yeah, uh, for the for the sake of you know industry, because industry doesn't run on agile, doesn't run on waterfall. It runs on top line, bottom line, and the business people they are there kind of you know. So it's 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 just. Uh, so for the sake of debate, I would like to say why I should have a scrum master who is non-technical. If someday something happens, I mean, it is it, it also works for an individual that if I lose my job as a scrum master, I don't really take that tension of, you know, managing the situation. I'm still good with my technology. So that, that works for me for, a, you know, uh, it's a risk management for me as an individual. Yeah, and, and it, it's also my interest. So why not? Why not? But you are arguing for both sides. Now I am arg arguing for the industry. You are not allowed to do that in a debate. <laughs> I am deeply unimpressed by this standard of debate. Okay. Yes, please. Uh, yes, yes. Try to do something about it. Yes. Please come a little ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, you, you we, talk we have, about… We have Rajendra. Uh, yeah. Please, please come here. No, it's okay. No, no, please, please come Let's debate whether Rajendra needs to come forward or not. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to clarify when you say technical scrum master, it's someone with techni technology skills, right? No, it, it means someone who runs on batteries and wires. If you cut come them up, there's yeah. no fresh blood. Oh. It's a Even robot. A plumber has a technical skill, so. It's a robot. Yeah, it's a robot, okay. To be honest, if you go from the scrum guide perspective, your scrum master is allowed to be a part of your development team as well. So there's absolutely... Can you speak up? Oh. From a scrum guide perspective, there is no objection that a scrum master 
should not have technolo technological skills they can also be a part of your development team there is a statement that says that your development team has to have well recommended sizes three to nine which excludes the scrum master and product owner unless they are also working on product backlog items so that they can there's no objection from Scrum Guide that Scrum Masters cannot do that. And if organizations need certain Scrum Masters who have to, let's say, do certain things, which is a need of the organization, why can't they have a JD like that? Why should we stop them? And I would like to add a third person on my side, Rajendra, is there. Would you like to have Scrum Master in your team who doesn't do development or doesn't do any technical work? No, definitely I don't. Because, uh -huh. yeah, I'm from the product or a development background. So I have seen that it is not a clerical job finally, okay. If the person knows in and out of the, if he understands the uh, product or whatever the services, okay, then he can, uh, he, he can be part of the team. It is not, it, it, the scrum master is not the person outside the team. He is part of the team. He should understand that what is happening inside the product development or services, okay. And that's why I don't like the person who doesn't know anything. Uh, as a Scrum Master. Yes, Rajiv. Yeah, hi. I would like to add uh, to Rajendra. I have worked both as a Scrum Master in my earlier stint in my earlier companies, both in a technical and non-technical. And I've realized this, it is always good to be having some knowledge in a technical background when you want to be a Scrum Master. Because uh, when you're talking with the product owner, with the other managers, product managers, pro there, there is something called a product backlog which needs to be defined and understood. And for that, if you're not very much technical, it becomes a challenge. Today I'm not uh, working on that particular role, but I believe that if I have to ask anyone to be a scrum master, I would un want him to know something about the product at least. Some technical knowledge is necessary in the current business. You, uh, all right so uh, in the interest of time let's move on to the next topic uh, do we really need to conclude yes uh, all of you are wrong at some level and all of you are <laughs> correct at some level and yes. that's, i think we can say they're fair uh, yes. yeah. 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 there is no right or wrong thing Based on the situation and circumstances, we have to choose. Yes, but uh, wonderful. But you did take a stand before. Yes. Very clear yeah, stand. Right. So you changed your mind. That's very agile. <laughs> 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 All right. So let's take the agility to the next level. Uh, Srini. Let us do some yoga. No, okay, I was just joking. But my comment on this whole debate is that the industry as such understands only two roles. One is the CEO, the other is a programmer. These are the only two roles people across the industry have an agreement with. All other roles are confused. Every company, every group has its own definition of every role. So much as we can debate what a scrum master is and so on. And remember in this debate, we didn't even get into the discussion on what a scrum master is supposed to do, but who this person should be. So, Lot of things left to debate still. So do we want to do that? So maybe, so let us take a particular uh, related topic, which is what happens to architects in Scrum? What happens to them? So a few things to keep in mind. First of all, architects for right and wrong reasons, they are somewhat glorified, uh, maybe for right reasons also. Uh, and I think, especially in India, but I've even seen this in Germany and so on, they, uh, they have a lot of reservations about just being, say, uh, being told that you are now part of the scrum team and uh, your role is a team member and somehow in their heads they can't reconcile that it is all right. So that's one problem. So, but technically it seems to them that they have been removed from some kind of leadership role. And it's a struggle for many architects, especially when coaches, high powered coaches like me, who are clueless, go and then they try to make this change. So there is a problem there. And I think it is a bit related to how we understand Scrum Again, remember, architects, 
is a role which is not very well understood in the industry. We talk about it comfortably, but it's not understood after whatever, 20, 30 years. So Scrum Master has been around for 15 years, 20 years, okay. What's the hope that it will really be understood? So anyway, coming back to uh, architects. Okay, one more thing. In this case, you have a veto. If you don't want to discuss this, that's fine. We can go to another topic. If you don't want this, I, I, uh, any objections? I already I, have an objection. Okay. Uh, <laughs> For the topic? For the topic. Okay, yes. let's cross it out. Oh, no, okay, let's see. Anyone, do, any debate necessary to cross it out or he supports, you object? No, no, I'm saying we should continue talking talking about it. About so, Scrum Master? No, architect. Architect. Architects. Architects. Okay, yes. yeah, please, please. Yes. So, uh, Scrum Guide says, or uh, not Scrum Guide, uh, um, the agile principles that the best architecture emerges from self-organizing teams and that is interpreted as we don't need an architect anymore. Uh, is that a right interpretation? I do not know and maybe that's something that all of you can comment about. I think that architect is not a role, it is one of the activity that you do. So a lot of people wake up in the morning and do a lot of activities in the day, right? So you eat, you walk, you sleep. So these are all necessary for a human being as a sign of living. And a software is also something which is a living system. And in, when you develop software, you need to create architectures. Now who does that? It's a different story. But architecture is needed. Now it was dedicated to one big role in the past and whether that role is necessary or not and as you said glorification of that role and all that as has over complicated this problem but uh, yes now how do we handle the architecture in agile or should it just be skipped is a question and there has to be a balance between emergent architecture and some vision with which the product goes. So how do we take care of it and for that reason I definitely think that we need a role or we need a person who will play that role but didn't, doesn't need to be glorified. Thoughts? It's again an opinion and I don't think we are even getting into a debate here. So I'm the asking. debate is what happens to architects, do we have two solutions for this? One is they become a team member with no special privileges at least as far as Scrum is concerned or should we do something else? In this context, I will propose, I am supporting that it should be done by team members. Oh, okay. So, there is no separate architect and there is no special privilege at all and the team will be responsible for the architecture in every way. Okay. There should be separate team member named architect because finally it is about the products architecture we are talking. If suppose anybody is giving his thought, then one day we'll find that nothing is happening. So one person who can take the decisions, he may take the opinions of the team members, but one person should be their named architect who is taking the decisions and moving ahead. Okay. If suppose we are not naming to anybody and based on the everybody's input, if we start developing something, then we, we will not reach to the goal. I see people are trying to convince me, it's no mm -hmm. use. You have to convince each other, I will sum it up at the end. Exactly. Especially you are coming from a systems background, especially the bigger system, the building technologies and the mobility, where the trains are going to be So hardware, firmware, software, everything is there together. So I think you are speaking from that perspective. Okay, not the smaller system where Amazon says that every 11 minutes we I was adding the same thing. We are talking about the ownership and uh, yeah. maybe a senior team member who, who is good enough can take ownership of it yeah. and the architecture can emerge there. So, uh, I, now the topic came as like about his complex systems. So, yeah. if they are that complex, then maybe a thought. Uh, in that case, you may have a separate architecture, but I I, I don't think that one agile team was uh, something work on. Uh, can you, can we have a thought like maybe uh, only architectures as a scrum team? Only a group of architecture, maybe a uh, five people working as a scrum team them, themselves. They have to test, they have to deliver, 
they have their product backlog. They will deliver what? To support the rest of the teams. Those who are working on the... A separate team of architecture as a scrum team to support the rest of the scrum teams. So you are breaking that scrum's rule of cross-functional. Cross-functional, yeah. And you want to separate it up. Yeah, because my first thought was the ownership. So I said yes, ownership can be taken by any senior member from the team. But if you see that project is that complex, which deals with a lot many things, maybe a firmware, software and hardware, all those things you have to work. So you need somebody to oversee that thing. So why not to have a team of architect, the scrum team? A cross-functional is a challenge, but yes. Any, so any objections to this? I, I have one. Uh, with, where I think the whole discussion, I'll come to you quickly. Uh, the whole discussion is going around ownership. What does ownership actually mean? Um, so I'm not, I'm very confused about it. Only one person is owing, so that means the rest of the people don't feel connected to it. And how is that agile? Finally, one should, uh, holistically, one should understand. Finally, one should holistically understand the system and take the decisions based on the input from the other team members. That that is called as a ownership. That is my answer. Right. Any thoughts? So, I was in this situation where I was in a 700-person company and we had an architecture group and the architecture group was, there was a chief architect, um, but other members of that group were anybody who was basically wanted to interact at that level and talk about scalability and reliability and all the abilities, right? Uh, and so that group sort of became kind of a scrum team, but it was really about teaching, which is kind of a strange way to think about architects, but the intention of that team was to teach uh, the rest of the developers about an architecture that could potentially do long-term benefit for the organization. And so the weird thing was I was in charge of the Agile program organization, the APO, in the company. So all the Agile coaches reported to me. I w attended the architects meeting because I I'm trained as a computer scientist, and I think that stuff is interesting. Um, and then ultimately what happened is as we became more and more agile, the architect's team began to be part of the product group. Um, they influenced, in, so when we started making priorities for major enhancements to the products, a lot of them would be features, of course. But the product people would not really understand if we wanted to scale to hundreds of thousands to millions to tens of millions of people logging in every day. Someone had to represent that feature and architects were necessary to do that. And so that team became one of the participants in rank ordering the major projects we would do. Yeah, I want to ask a very basic question. Uh, I mean, what what is the role and responsibility of an architect in the holistic context, not only of architect architecture of that particular product, but where exactly the product is going? Like recently, Nokia had a grudge that they couldn't really sustain with the market pace or something like that. So, is it also uh, when we say accountability of an architect? So is it, is it only for that making sure that that product or, or it, it's a different vision altogether when we, when we are discussing about this? So, so very quickly, um, I still take the stand that most of the industry doesn't understand the role. And we are most of the industry. True. Anyway, so... So we are still trying to think what an architect is. I think what I see in many, many companies is very, very different and you can do various different things. But the question that Nilesh asked is, if the architect... So one sure way to kill innovation in a company is to have an innovation department. Then no one else thinks that innovation is, is their business. <laughs> yeah. One sure way to kill architectural responsibility is to say, that guy is architect. Uh, so, it is not that easy to come up with this conclusion. We have to think much deeper. 
but the stance that we have taken, we have taken, uh, I think Rajendra says that no, there has to be someone to. So, what I would like to do is, I am not saying you are wrong, um, but Nalish has got a very good point. So, are we trying to reconcile or take separate stands? His opinion, he is just saying that what is the role of Alter? He asked a question and actually very few of us have been much of architects. Uh, and which company understands this? We are not sure. I think it is also very different in different places. In, like in India, in many companies, they say J2E architect. What the devil is a J2E architect? The J2E is already the architecture is there. You know, this, the thing is there, right? You are just plugging in here and there. So, what is this J2E architect? Uh, you have to go by the architecture of spring or struts. So, that is there. So, there is very little thought and that is very, very disappointing. But anyway, so just for a dampener, any opinion, any response, Anand? Oh, you have no idea, no worries, no worries. Should we have a separate role as an architect or a CEO or part of Yeah, especially if it is me. But, uh, but anyway, what are we concluding? So, uh, I, I could actually talk about what I have yes, seen please. at my workplace, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I work at Gojek, uh, it is an Indonesian startup uh, mm -hmm. and uh, primarily I work on their payment systems. So, uh, it is important that it is resilient, it is item potent, like you fire a transaction a million times, it should go through only once and those kind of things, right. Um, and we have built this whole system solely by having dev huddles and by ensuring that uh, senior people, members in the team are obviously a part of the dev huddles and every everyone has the responsibility of actually contributing to it. You can be a mute spectator but obviously you over time you will be expected to add to it. Uh, so we as per se do not have a architect role as such but then uh, obviously if there is uh, something wrong then the senior members will be held accountable and we ourselves feel accountable for that. Uh, but as a specific role, probably not. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Rajendra is not here in the room, but uh, I find, in, in my opinion, we have found value in actually discussing architectural ideas on a, with the whole team and like the team I work with on a broader scale is about 40 people in all, uh, various products combined. So, there, there is merit to that. You obviously need someone to start a conversation about it and mm -hmm. beyond that you basically do whiteboarding and come up with decisions for certain things and mm -hmm. that is the way we normally do it at Gojek. So yeah. I, I think there is not too much debate that of the need for someone who is senior who has had the experience of architecting but what his formal role is I think that is where our questions that, are. That is yeah. where the difference yeah. Okay. Is Fair enough. So, we have uh, what 7 minutes? Uh, uh, yeah. seven minutes? Okay. So, another team debate? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me have one say on this one. Yes, uh, of course. Think, see, I think we tend to club all software as a single type of thing, you know, but that is not the case really, okay. I mean, if you are uh, developing Angular uh, library, you definitely need an architect, you can't do it or you will be troubling your users by uh, releasing it every day and all that. It is just not possible, okay. You can't just fix it on the go or if you are building any developer tool for that matter, okay. But if you are building a fixed uh, use application, sure you can get away with not having much of uh, architecture. You can build the abilities as you go along. It is a question of abstraction of the level of software, right? If there is, mm. it is at a higher level of abstraction, highest level being compiler compilers and all that, right? Which are specified formally, developed formally, and the lowest level being maybe a leave application software, right? So, as you go up the higher abstraction, you need, uh, you need architecture and you can't go by this method. You will get into a freeze basically. I have seen it at least in 10 points. Yeah, yeah, no, I think that point is correct, absolutely. So, so um, I just want to add on this. So, 
uh, I think we are still uh, in as an industry confused about the role of architecture and architect. the role or the person called architect. We definitely need architecture, and especially we, when we build build big systems. Uh, who can do it? And this senior senior versus junior and all that confusion has created all this hierarchies. Mm -hmm. Uh, plus, you know, when you talk about one practice or one thought also, it comes with some surrounding things. Mm. Like, if you have not enabled your organization with a lot of things like uh, cultural aspect plus technical, uh, you know, um, collective ownership and some of the best engineering practices, then just thinking about, okay, the self-organizing team will figure out all those things, that concept will not work. So, we need an holistic thinking on this when you want to get rid of a particular designation or a role and move to the more agilistic thinking how can you make it with the surrounding things also that, that's i think so it will be a journey it will not be a, like a yes and no flag is what i think yeah, yeah. so even uh, it just reminds me of a little uh, maybe anand and will have more details so this whole thing there was a time when ejbs were uh, supposed to solve world hunger and all the other problems, right? <laughs> so, at that time, there was some architect and son and then it got taken over by Oracle. He even came to Pune and gave a talk, oh, I'm the architect of this and so on. So, there was individual responsibility, all that and so on. So, what? It was a crappy system. So, you can have an individual accountable and all that and it looks good on his CV and I'm sure he's gone into a great job, but he's del still delivered something that had to be undone and come up with lighter frameworks later on. So, it may not work. Yeah, Even if you have a separate architect. Yeah. Room, yeah, I know. We it. It yeah. All right. <laughs> on the, for the CV. For the CV. For the CV. If you have worked on that system and you have successfully delivered something, that's worth going on your CV. That's talent right there. Uh, it is easy to successfully deliver. Whether it's usable is a completely different matter, right? <laughs> 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 but uh, yes. I would like to connect to uh, the, the panel talk yesterday. Uh, if you remember the talk by the rocket guys from uh, this thing, and, and they, they didn't really have any specific architect, and the system still worked. However, however, they were they were really looking at the architecture as a part of it they were taking guidance from uh, isro yeah but but they never never really had an architect kind of you know per se and it was a self organized event by student and it really worked well so do we do we really differentiate ourselves in the software industry from the rocket guys of course we are miles away from there isn't it ah, okay so we are, we are smaller we, than we, them? we struggle <laughs> okay. um, no 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 not at all not a chance because uh, we we struggle to deliver systems like leave applications in time. Okay. So, so <laughs> and and we think J two E architect is an architect. So so uh, as agile organizations grow, um, we stop ideally uh, having uh, modular teams that are responsible for let's say database and then another team that is responsible for back end mm -hmm. and another team that is responsible for front end instead we try we strive for full stack teams that can deliver features from back to front um, <clears throat> but in doing that in my experience what ends up happening is uh, we still need um, centers of expertise uh, so there are, these people become highly skilled at database, for example, understanding um, you know uh, different interesting, sophisticated database forms that can make it possible to go very fast, for example, or uh, uh, front end things like uh, uh, Java, Angular, that sort of thing. These people, in my experience, if we let them form clubs and those clubs are seen in virtually all scaling practices we've seen so I think architecture is in the same category to some extent so these are the people who think about larger picture things with all these 
itties, as we say, scalability, security, all these things. And then through the power of their coherence and their influence, they are working in many parts of the organization and the organization naturally is attracted to those and goes forward. So I, I, mm. I do think the architecture team is in this category, this sort of center of excellence or center of expertise, the same way that we would do for a database, and that a primary function of them is to teach. Mm. And through okay. that, they are they accountable for the long-term architecture of the product? Well, yes, in a sense, right? Mm -hmm. They are the people who yeah. think about that and are influencing the whole organization, but at the same time, the organization is also responsible because if uh, individuals on scrum teams think that these guys are bozos over there that are inventing some crazy thing like EJB2 to drive their entire company, then, uh, then they don't have to take the advice, right? Or they could form uh, different groups yeah. that have higher influence because of the thus, you know, intelligence of their recommendations. Yeah. It does sound as if uh, we are moving towards uh, learning organization where the organization is learning that the uh, role of the architects, the placement of the architects, the formal as well as informal roles and their influence has to evolve over a period of time. Is this a fair way to say or to summarize? All right. I think I was arguing that the organizer for the architecture team, the organizer for the architecture team Maybe a formal role, but the formal role is really to get people together that have that interest and to make sure that they have a voice in the organization. But they, in, in our experience, our, 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 the head of our architecture team, even before we went agile, did not have the authority to tell people what to do. Uh, that authority was granted just by virtue of having smart things come out of him. Okay. Uh, and I liked that, and I thought that was very compatible with Agile. Good culture. All right, we actually come to the end of this uh, debate. So thank you very much for attending. Hopefully, new thoughts, if not new conclusions. So see you in some other rooms a yeah, li little later. Yeah. Yes, please. I would never like to have any conclusions on these topics because uh, in any system, there has to be a debate, there has to be some opposition, and then only the system actually improves. So I, I really like the difference of opinion or, or in, in India or US, whatever the political situation is, uh, if you actually consider, so we, we really need a position, and that's how the system will improve, and thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, to, to, just to con uh, no, take it further, um, how we do it or how suggested do is sitting in a room and debating and concluding right in there itself is not an agile mindset at all. Uh, take a stand, whatever it is, positive, negative, try it out for a month, see if it works, what didn't work, what worked and take the next step. So with that I think uh, yeah. we can close this session. Thanks everyone. Uh, thanks Srinivas, thanks Bhuvan, thanks Neelish, Vijay, Dan and everyone attending this session. And we'll move to next session though. And thank you everyone.